Okay, so welcome to lesson two. Today we are going to talk about the uh, topic of compositions of functions. Now, the topic may seem uh, like some new stuff, but uh, in reality, uh, the main piece of the concept, it's not really new because um, we have actually done something just like this already. Uh, the only thing that's different, the only thing that's new is just the notation that we are about to see. Now, just a quick reminder, okay? Like for example, uh, if I give you f of x is equal to say uh, x plus one, okay? And then I say to you, I say, hey, everybody, what is uh, f of two? You probably know how to do this thing right here already. You just go ahead and substitute two into X because uh, the notation tells us that the uh, new X value is now two. So we will plug in two accordingly. And uh, if we say, hey guys, if uh, F of uh, X now becomes F of two uh, X, uh, plus three, for example, then you would know how to do this too, because the two X plus three, it's our new X value. So therefore we will go ahead and plug in two X plus three in the place of X for the original function F of X. And then we'll just go ahead and simplify this a little bit. And we have something like this, right? Now, so the only thing that it's really different today, which is, again, it's the concept is not new, it's just a notation that it's new, is that now, now what we're trying to do is that for this thing right here inside the, uh, the F uh, function, we say, hey, you know what? Can you see this is 2x plus 3? That's also a function. It's a linear function. So you know what we could do? We can actually name the linear function, and then we just put it there. And that's what we mean by the, uh, the compositions of function, meaning that we, what we are placing one function into another. That's it. OK, so. Over here, uh, the very top, you can see some notations right here. And we're saying that, hey guys, uh, in order to show that we are placing a function within a function, so we can use this kind of uh, notation to annotate that. So how do we say it? How do we actually say it? So we say, oh, uh, this is how we will speak it. We will say it is F, let me make this, uh, my, uh, my line a little bit thinner. F of G of X. Okay, so that's what we call the uh, F of G of X. Now, personally, I prefer this one, this kind of notation, because uh, it's a lot easier to, to, uh, to understand what's inside what. And, uh, and some people may think that, wow, that's confusing. F of G of X, that's so many ofs. So uh, can we make this a little bit clearer? And we say, yes, actually. Let's go ahead and put a little parentheses. And when we say it, we, little bit, we have to be a little bit artistic. So we can just go ahead and put a little pause right here. Okay. We can say F of G of X. Okay, so we say, oh yeah, it's uh, originally f of x, but now instead of x, we now have a function, g of x. So we're placing the function g within the function f, for example, okay? And slightly to the right, it's just a different notation. So we can say, hey, we can uh, go ahead and put down a g of f of x. So g of x is on the outside, and then you're placing f of x in the inside. Okay, so uh, so we can go ahead and say uh, g of f of x. And again, if you want to make things clearer for yourself, you can just go ahead and put parentheses. All right. So the way I like to think about this is that you can think about uh, let's just say f of um, f of g of x. Now, what I would do, <clears throat> excuse me, 
What I would do is that when I uh, draw my uh, parentheses, when I write my parentheses, I would like to make sure that there is a difference in terms of size. And this would allow you to see the hierarchy or the boundary or the what I call layers of the functions. We can say that we can see that uh, g of x is in the inside and f of x is on the outside. So what you can think of is this. I like to think of this as a little box. And let me go ahead and do some uh, coloring so that you can see this even better. So let's just say we use green for the g of x and purple for the f of x. So what's going on here is that we have a, consider, consider this as a little box, that's f of x, or just f. And then we are placing a smaller box that's called G. And what we're doing, we are placing this box into the F function. So if you want to write down some keywords, then I would say, hmm, you know what? Let's uh, write down some keywords right here. I would say, uh, oops. I would say that um, uh, the keywords would be, ooh, the, uh, the boxes are gone. So uh, let me go ahead and draw this again. Apologize for the delay. So again, we have the big function out there. Okay, we call this F. And then we have a little box. We call it G. And what we're doing is that we are placing the G of X into the f of x. So the keywords I would like to talk about here is that uh, we can talk about this as the outer function. So in this case, it will be f of x, the outer function. And then we are going to think about the inner function, which would be the g of x, the inner function. Now, why do we have to learn this? I think uh, we all want to ask that question. Now, uh, in calculus, we are going to see uh, layers and layers of uh, functions, uh, and we actually have to do something about them, okay, when you take calculus uh, next year, okay? And, uh, and we want to make sure that our notation is very explicit, and I would guarantee you that your good notation for this particular chapter, for this, for, well, I mean, for, your, for this entire course, will pay great dividend for this course and your calculus and whatever math you're doing in the future. I promise you, if you have great handwriting, if you have good notation, you are going to get the benefits of your hard work, okay? So make sure that uh, your great handwriting, your good notation, it, they're both your uh, daily habits that you do, you practice for math, okay? So let's take a look at example number one. So we are given two functions. We have the function f, f of x, we have x plus two, it's a linear function. And then we have the g of x, which is a parabola, a quadratic function, because we see the x squared. So what we do is that uh, we look at part a, b, c, d, we're seeing different kind of compositions. So now what I would go ahead and uh, do right away is that, as I told you, uh, the one that's listed at A, B, C, D, they are not my preferred notation. So I'm just going to go ahead to uh, write my notation this way. Okay. So, so what's going on? Now, please go ahead and follow uh, this uh, concept uh, very closely. Okay. So I'm going to color code it. So the G of X, the inner function will be orange. So the outer function, it's F. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead, do the f. Now, f of x is x plus 2. So we're going to put a parenthesis for the place of x and then plus 2. Now, because uh, well, the reason why I put a pair of parentheses is because we acknowledge that something, it's going to go into the place of x because we are putting in something. And what is that? Well, g of x. What is, what is g of x? Well, right here, g of x is uh, 4 minus x squared. So we're going to, we are going to uh, put in 4 minus x squared in the place of the original x, 
in the f of x. So I hope you can see that by providing parentheses, you are doing yourself a huge favor to allow yourself to see this whole thing much more clearly. Okay, and uh, if you think that it can be simplified, then we will go ahead and simplify it. So we'll say, hey, the uh, answer after simplification, we have uh, negative x squared plus six. Very straightforward, okay? Very straightforward. So again, please make sure, please do make sure that you can observe the inner function, which is the g of x, and that equals to four minus x squared. That will be placed in to the original location for x. So that's why you see the parentheses right here. And then, um, and I hope the color coding would help you see it better. So again, habit is extremely crucial. Habit is extremely crucial. Okay, so we have g of f of x. So we have the g of x on the g of x on the outside and the f of x on the inside. So g of f of x. So what's g? We say, oh, g is uh, this thing called four minus x squared, right? But now something new is going to go into the place of x. What's new? Well, it's the function f. And what's f? Oh, it's x plus two. It's x plus two. Okay, so uh, now should we expand? Should we do the FOIL to expand the x plus two? Okay, I would say, well, I can actually see the like term forming a uh, combining because uh, there's a four right here. And then after you do the FOIL, you expect to see a constant term. So in this case, we'll say, let's go ahead and uh, FOIL this because we anticipate some uh, combination of like terms. And this is where you really want to uh, be great with your notation. So we put a pair of parentheses around it. So four minus that, four minus that, boom, okay? And it's, again, very important that you put a pair of parentheses because, hey, there's a minus on the outside. So not only if you help yourself to see better, you also pre prevent yourself protect yourself from making careless mistakes because there's a minus outside of parentheses. So we say, oh, so it's four minus x squared minus four x minus four. And you can see the plus four right here. And then the minus four right here, they cancel each other out. So what's left is just minus x squared minus four x. And that's good. Okay, that's simpler than our original because we can combine some like terms and the constant term just happened to disappear. That's wonderful. All right. So now let's take a look at uh, let's look at uh, this one, uh, part C and part D. Now, after going through these two examples in part A and part B, I hope you get what's going on. So if you may, you may pause this video actually, and then try to go ahead and do part C and part D and see how far you can go. Okay, let's go ahead and do that for yourself. Let's go ahead and pause this video for a second, and then just go ahead and try part C and part D. Okay, assuming that uh, you have done what uh, needs to be what needs to be done, so we go ahead and do part C. So we say f of f. Now it's I understand it looks strange because you see two functions, okay, right next to each other. So we we will say this is f of f of x, meaning that the outside is the f function and the inside is also an f function. So what does it look like? What does it look like? Well. I mean, you have f of x, right? x plus two. And what's the inside? Oh, the inside, it's f of x, right? So x plus two. So just try not to overcomplicate things. It's really simpler than you think. It's really simple. If you know how to read the notation, if you know what it's the inside function, what's the outside function, just go ahead and do that. And life, it's really, really straightforward. So we'd say, hey, I can see some like terms. I see the plus two and plus two. So let's go ahead and combine them. And we have x plus four. Very straightforward. Very, very straightforward. And what about part D? Well, in this case, we don't see an x anymore. We see a three in the place of x. Well, guess what? Three is the new x. So f of g of 
three f of g of three just like this we say all right let's go ahead so f is x plus two so we put a gigantic parentheses right here and we are going to stuff something in so we say hey what's g of three what's g of three well g is four minus x squared right so uh, you can refer from the top and we say let's go ahead and put in g of not x but three so it will be four minus well not x in this case because the x is now three so we put in three right here and then square it okay so i hope the color coding really helps you out to visualize what's going on what's the inside what's the outside um so we say oh hey uh, it's just four minus nine plus two so uh so you will have uh, positive six minus nine, which ends up to be negative three. Okay, very, very straightforward. Very straightforward. So again, if you can write out the notation perfectly and you know what's inside, what's outside, you know what to put in to the parentheses, it's really straightforward. Okay, it's really straightforward. Now, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and direct our attention to the bottom half. So now we are also uh, looking at two functions, f and g. So uh, f of x is square root of x plus three and g of x is x squared. So we, uh, well, now this is some uh, old stuff that we uh, talked about uh, last period or so. So we say, what's the domain of f? What is f? So we look at f and we say, ooh, that's square root. What do we not want for a square root? And we say, oh yeah, we don't want anything underneath the square root to be, well, let me make it smaller. We don't want anything underneath the square root to be negative because that would give us imaginary. If it's zero, if it's zero great. If it's greater than zero, great too. So, so that means we're gonna say, oh yeah, you know what? No, we don't really want x plus three to be negative. We want x plus three to be at least zero or even greater than zero. So what you can do is to, uh, well, put that verbal statement into mathematical expression. So in this case, we'll say, yeah, you know what? We want x plus three to be greater or equal to zero. And then you get x by itself and we say, oh yeah. So in this case, x is greater than, or equal to negative three. Well, does it make sense? Well, let's take a look. I mean, if it's negative three, you have negative three plus three, which is zero. Oh, that's nice. We can have a square root of zero, which equals to zero. And if it's bigger than negative three, we say, oh yeah, if you put in negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and so forth. Like if you uh, take a look at it, if it's bigger than negative three, you will end up having a positive number underneath the square root, which is exactly what we want to see. So that's why we say, oh yeah, the domain for f, it's gonna be x greater than or equal to negative three. Or in interval notation, we'll say, oh, please include negative three and it will go all the way to infinity. That's the domain of f, okay? And uh, in class, I said this to uh, everybody and I said that, hey, uh, everybody, uh, this is pre-calc, so what's assumed is that uh, you should have great knowledge about uh, those major types of functions, you know, uh, linear function, quadratic function, uh, what else? Uh, you have square root function, exponential function, uh, absolute value function, logarithmic function, you know. You should know the features and behaviors of all these functions, but if you don't, it's okay. Just make sure you really follow along this uh, material and it's going to be good. Okay, so now let's uh, switch, switch our focus to uh, the g of x. We ask, uh, hey, what's the um, domain for g of x? What's the domain for g of x? And we say that's uh, x squared, right? What do we know by x squared? It goes all the way to the left. It goes all the way to the right, the parabola. It is intersecting the x-axis at zero for uh, g of x equals to x squared. So that's not really anything that x cannot be. X could literally be anything and, uh, and we will have a function value. So we say the domain of uh, g of x is gonna be from negative infinity to infinity. 
So if you want to be successful in this course, then you really need to make some new friends. So uh, I call these functions my buddies because I know their likes and dislikes. Like for square root function, it would say it likes zero. It likes positive numbers for square root function. function. But what does it dislike? Oh, it really dislikes uh, negative, negative numbers because if you place a negative number overall in the, underneath the square root, we will say, well, that's not really helpful, you know? because it will become imaginary and we cannot plot imaginary on a you know regular kind of axes right here so yeah so uh, so uh, that's how we get the domain for g of x now what about uh, f of g of x well that's just like what we did earlier f of g of x okay so uh well let's see if i can just go ahead and not do a color coding i think you should be able to handle this by now if not you should really get used to it Okay, so f of g of x. So f is on the outside. So we have square root of x plus three, and we're going to have some new value for x plus three, for the x. We're going to have a new value for x. And what's the new value? Oh, it's the g of x, which is x squared. Okay. So we can just leave it like this. Okay, or you can just take take take, uh, take away the uh, parentheses. So x squared plus three in the underneath the square root. Okay, that's the f of g of x. Right, easy stuff, easy stuff. And now we say, hey, what's the domain for this uh, composition of function actually? And we'd say, well, let's take a look at this. Now we can actually, uh, now you can use the previous method, which is to set up an inequality. You say x squared plus three is greater than zero. You can do that. But now I want to teach you a way to actually know this even better and faster. Okay, right here. Let's take a look here. What do you know about x squared? What do you know about x squared? And we say, oh, you know, x squared, you put uh, any numbers in there, okay? Uh, it's going to stay positive. Okay, if it's put in zero, that's going to be zero. But if you put in any number other than zero, it, x squared is going to end up positive because positive times positive, it's positive, of course. And negative times negative, it's going to be also positive. Okay. So what we understand is that this guy right here, x squared, it's going to be as small as zero. And it's going to go even higher because it's three. So the smallest value for this whole function, it's going to be three. I mean, square root three, sorry, when uh, x squared is equal to zero. And it can go even higher because, um, you know, x could be any number and then we just square it to get a positive number and then we just add it to a three to the square root so so since there's not really a restriction for the x we'll say all right the domain is from negative infinity to infinity because x could literally be anything if you don't trust me go ahead think of any number positive number negative number put into x and see for yourself will it become a negative number you say, nah, no, nah, because the smallest value, it's going to be uh, zero, uh, the it's going to be a square root three. Okay, this happens when the uh, when the x is zero. Okay, that's the smallest value. It's going to be positive already, and it's going to be even higher. So you know, it's no restriction at all. What about g of f of x? So we have g of x. Okay, but inside of g of x, we have g of. Uh, I mean, we will place the f of x right here. So g of f of x. Well, what's g of f of x? So we have uh, right here, g of x, it's uh, this gigantic parentheses, which we will put the new x value in there in a moment. And then we will square the whole thing. We say, well, what's f of x? Oh, it's right here. Two, oh, sorry, x plus three. Easy, easy. Okay. Now, some of you may think about Wait, hold on, I see the square and the square roots. Can I cancel them out? Can I cancel them out and write down x plus three? Well, I cannot stop you. And actually it actually has some kind of usage, okay? When you write down x plus three. Now, I'm just gonna jump ahead and say, yeah, we will graph this because that's what it is. But I am going to put a little asterisk right here. And why? Because we need to look at the domain. 
And where do we look at a domain? Do we look at a domain right here, the first one that we listed here, or the one that's being simplified? Which one do we look at? We say, oh, it's gonna be the one uh, that's initially valid, okay? It's always gonna be the one that's initially there. And the reason why we always use the initial uh, function, okay, even though we could simplify it, but we wanna look at the initial one because, well, that gives us the best view of what could be X and what cannot be X. After you simplified, it may, no, it may not look the same anymore and something may be hidden. So if you look at this, we are like, well, you have a square root of X plus three, right? So uh, can X be anything? And we say, oh, no, 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 no. No, it cannot be anything because uh, you don't want the, uh, the number underneath the square root to be negative. You don't want three plus X to be negative because that would just turn out to be imaginary. So we say, yeah, so about that part. So X, it's gonna be at least negative three and it goes all the way to infinity because with this domain, everything would be valid. If you put a negative three into uh, X, well, then you have uh, just zero, okay? You have to zero underneath. And then you have square root of zero, which is fine, just zero. Okay. So I'm going to pause a moment right here and just let you uh, settle uh, the materials right here, kind of let, let them sink in. And then for the next uh, video, we will go ahead and talk about the other stuff. Okay. Very straightforward. I promise it's very straightforward. All right. So take a moment, look at the notes, and see if you understand everything. <laughs>